Bangkok, a megalopolis that stretches to the horizon and beyond, one of the world's greatest cities, an urban sprawl that never sleeps. At the end of the 19th century, Bangkok had a population of just 350,000. Today, 18 million people live in this vibrant capital and its suburbs. The animals that once populated the surrounding jungle and countryside have had to adapt or perish. Many have taken refuge in the heart of the city, occupying the thousands of kilometers of pipes and tunnels that riddle the ground, turning the underbelly of Bangkok into a bewildering labyrinth. Two kinds of animal lurk in the heart of this invisible metropolis, those that secrete venom and those that don't. We're going to be looking at all the ones that produce toxins, animals that have adapted to the follies of humankind in this overheated, polluted world. They're present everywhere, mainly sheltering in pipes and sewers, hidden corners and trenches, but sometimes slipping in between the sheets seeking out the cool of a bathroom or hiding in a shoe by day or night. In the vast majority of cases, they inject their venom when they feel threatened and kill instinctively because they're alarmed. City dwellers fear these animals, some of which secrete sufficient quantities of powerful venom to kill an elephant. One of the most dangerous creatures in Thailand has slipped into a house in search of a dark corner where it can wait for night to fall before setting out to hunt. Reptiles generally avoid humans and their racket, but when it becomes impossible to escape it, they have to adapt or die out. In today's Thailand, forests only cover 20% of the land area, compared to 60% 50 years ago. The government's Royal Forest Department has set up national parks with a view to limiting deforestation, but the damage has already been done. With humans invading their territory, snakes have taken to roads, paths, villages and houses in search of space and food. Despite the terror they cause, reptiles play a vital role in the environment. Like all predators, they help to maintain a balance of species. Rodents especially would multiply and spread from the sewers to infest the city. Rats and mice would become a more dangerous threat than reptiles. If we could just overcome our phobia, we would admire snakes. Their method of locomotion alone is a miracle of evolution. They've developed the technique of reptation to move efficiently without arms or legs. Snakes form an S shape with their body, dig their scales into the ground and push themselves forward. They do this using powerful muscles attached to the skeleton. The reptile's many vertebrae form a supple spine strong enough to handle the traction of these muscles. There are pairs of ribs attached to each cervical or dorsal vertebra, but none on the tail vertebrae. These ribs are not joined under the belly and stretch wide when the snake swallows a large animal. Snakes generally move at around six kilometers an hour.
Although many Asian snakes in search of new territory are killed, some have been successful. They've found a new El Dorado, their promised land, a vast, warm place with endless ramifications, a gigantic warren full of food, the underground world of a megalopolis. Bangkok, with its overcrowded avenues bordered by quiet, almost provincial alleys, markets, sewers and subterranean mazes teeming with rats, has been invaded by snakes. Monitor lizards demonstrate the ability of reptiles to adapt to Asian cities. Downtown Lumpini Park is now their territory. There are so many snakes in Bangkok that the government has set up a special call number, 199, for any reptile-related emergencies. In 2009, 2,935 calls were recorded and 2,744 snakes caught in the city. Despite this attempt at population control, the number of snakes increases each year. In October 2011, a third of Thailand was flooded. Built on a plain barely two meters above sea level, Bangkok didn't escape the disaster. Animals took refuge in houses. Although the situation had improved a few months later, the waters remained high, and undesirable animals were still to be found in some of the capital's homes. It was at this point that Mr. Sompo became an international star. The modest, courteous man has an unusual job title, public snake hunter. A government official at the Navy Ministry, the 50-year-old is seconded in emergencies to assist citizens who have found snakes in their homes. Sompo has been bitten by snakes so many times that his system has grown resistant to their venom. He has developed antibodies. His body is mithridatized, to use the technical term. This Saturday morning, he's received a call from a man living in a district hit by October's floods. The disaster on an unprecedented scale claimed more than 650 lives and affected over 5 million people. The cost of the damage was more than 36 billion US dollars. Once a quiet green haven, the neighborhood has become a dump, abandoned by humans and taken over by tarantulas, scorpions, scolopendra and snakes of all kinds. The homeowner saw a snake at his door two days ago. He claims the reptile was a cobra about 1.5 meters long. First of all, Sompo and his son search the house. The snake could be hiding anywhere and might strike to defend itself. The two explore every nook and cranny of each room. Sompo intentionally makes a lot of noise. Hearing him, the reptile will try to escape rather than attack. The real danger would be to startle the animal, causing it to strike and bite instinctively. Now Sompo and his son spray a pesticide powerful enough to kill the insects that have filled the house and above all repel snakes. The cobra is nowhere to be found. It has obviously left. If it was still there, Sompo would have rooted it out. The relieved owner can tidy his home in peace. The pesticide will repel all animals for 10 days. The man will have time to clean up his house and make sure it attracts no more undesirable visitors. Another call. This time, a monastery in the city centre needs Sompo's help. This morning, the gardener saw quite a large snake in a drain pipe.
เพศแต่เนี่ยจากบาท่อเนี่ยเปิดได้ไหนลมองเห็นเนี่ยนะหาเหล็กมาเราเปิดขอโทษมีอะไรเปิดไหมท่านเขาเหล็กมีนิดนึงกลัวจะหนีไปก่อนนะพี่ก่อนเนี่ยมีลงคลองเหรอนูนท่านบอกว่ามันมันมันจะไปออกทางนี้ไงมีอะไรมางัดนะเนนมันออกไหนได้นูนนะรูรูท่อสุดท้ายออกนั่นใช่ไหมท่านเดี๋ยวกำลังเปิดปลาท่อก็คงจับได้เลยโทษนะถ้ามันจำถึงมันจริงดักขึ้นไปกินเลยดูเลยเปิดแล้วต้องรีบไม่ทันละไม่ทันละไป The snake has slipped off into the pipes. The exits it could escape from must be blocked. The monks move into action, removing the covers from all the drains around the lawn. The young boy looks into the hole to see if the snake is lurking near the exit. Fortunately, it isn't. It must be trapped further up. Everything is ready. Neighbors have come to help the monks deal with the emergency. The drains are flooded to drive the snake out. Now, all that's needed is patience. This time, they're certain. The snake is just there between the two access points, refusing to move. The onlookers still seem happy to plunge their hands into the water. Is that really a good idea? In a few days, Sompo will release the python into the wild. Not something he'd do with venomous snakes, which are all sent to the Red Cross Snake Center. <laughs> In the heart of the city, the Red Cross Center is a menagerie of venomous reptiles. The staff here work on producing antidotes. Founded in 1923 on the initiative of Queen Sawang Vadana, then president of the Thai Red Cross, this reptile breeding center now holds more than 3,000 venomous serpents. Snakes captured in the city are brought here every day. Some of them, like this non-venomous python, are sent on to another facility on the edge of Bangkok. The center only keeps venomous snakes, such as this green viper, which is deadly despite its small size. Tasca, the veterinarian who runs the center, is busy with another arrival. This cobra was captured in town. Despite the cord binding it, Tasca handles the snake with caution. His right hand carries the marks of a moment of carelessness that nearly cost him his life. Uh, 
Uh, at, at that time, I was, I was uh, doing a physical, physical examination on the Siamese cobra. That cobra gets sick and he cannot shed his skin. I tried to help him. Uh, but suddenly, after, uh, after I, I removed his skin, he turned around and bit me on the finger, on the middle finger of right hand. All this area are uh, a dead, a dead skin. Yeah. Yes, that we call necrosis. Yeah. And the doctor make a skin deprivement to cut the dead skin out. Yeah. And cut the skin and the subcutaneous from this area and also my blood vessel to transplant it here. When they arrive at the center, the snakes are restrained with a cord around their neck. They try to find a way to catch a cobra. Sometimes the rope is too tight. Yes, this main this head is swelling because the blood circulation was obstructed. The veterinarian has to get the snake's circulation going again. If we're getting better, just release the, the lure. We can find the snake in the child very often because a lot of snakes live near the human. They live in the sewer tunnels, they feed on the rats and sometimes the frogs. So it's many times that people in the town will confront with the snakes, both venomous and non-venomous. So we'll get the snake almost every day. Just like the python, the cobra, and the pit viper. Because they can lay uh, a large crutch of eggs, sometimes maybe you can reach to 60, 60 eggs per one crutch. Yeah. And their population is increasing in Bangkok. Thailand is home to more than 180 species of snake, 56 of them venomous. So there's an obvious need to study the reptiles here and organize research teams able to produce anti-venins. This four-story building was renovated in 1990. It has over 6,000 square meters of brand new premises. The first two floors are for the public, while the upper two are used for breeding and milking venom. It's no easy task to deal with all these snakes. The highly qualified staff work calmly and humanely as they tend to the needs of the reptiles. Today is a special occasion for the cobras, bath day. Every movement is controlled. Each second spent with the animal demands absolute focus. The keeper knows the reptile and can always anticipate its reflexes, which are often defensive. It takes a great deal of expertise to clean the cobra's living space. The cages are cleaned once or twice a week. Even when keepers perform the same tasks every day, they must never forget that a snake can strike at any moment. The toxicity of cobra venom is such that a full bite can release enough toxin to kill an elephant. The quantity of venom injected varies according to the type of bite. When a snake bites to defend itself, it only releases a small amount. But when it's hungry or flight is impossible, it can remain with its fangs sunk into its prey, making continual chewing movements to inject its venom deeply and massively until the animal dies. The keepers know all this. Since the center was opened, there have been no recorded accidents. It would be impossible for the keepers to feed their 3,000 residents every day. Fortunately, most of the snakes only eat once a week. Today, it's the cobra's turn. Naturally, the king cobra takes precedence. Its weekly royal banquet is made up of frogs. Its neighbor in the same row, the monocled cobra, has a more ordinary diet of small mice. Five are counted out and the box is closed again. 
The cobra will eat when it wants. Spurred by hunger, they generally attack rapidly. One of the Red Cross Snake Center's goals is to teach the general public to respect and be wary of the reptiles who share their habitat. Each visitor learns that snakes contribute to the ecological balance of our world. Staff stress the fact that by limiting rodent numbers, they also help to control the spread of diseases passed on by rats and mice. Snakes are milked on the upper floors in an area where only experienced handlers operate. The keepers milk their snakes once a week. Today, it's the viper's turn. This precious substance could kill a number of humans, but will be used to treat them. Each year in the rainy season, some of the houses in Bangkok are flooded. The rising waters fill the cellars first. The many insects and arachnids that shelter there are forced to seek another refuge. They often end up in unexpected places. Although custom dictates that visitors should remove their footwear at the door as a basic precaution, they should check their shoes carefully before putting them on again. On the other side of the world in France, scientists are minutely examining scorpion venom. A stone's throw from the crowds on the packed beaches of Cannes, a new research company is working to produce drugs from venom, particularly scorpion toxin. Just like their Thai counterparts, the scientists milk the scorpions by running a weak electrical current through the animal's sting to make them release their venom. Today, there are two, uh, three drugs derived from snake venom. There's uh, antihypertensive that was produced from the venom of a Brazilian snake, a Brazilian viper. And there are two compounds for coronary syndromes, for example, uh, heart problems. They're anticoagulants. Snake venom is a complex cocktail of biological compounds whose composition changes according to the environment and season, and even the animal's diet. Although it's been studied for 50 years, venom hasn't yet revealed all its secrets. Based on the research that's been done, uh, today we think that there are at least 40 to 50 million compounds contained in animal venom as a whole. And we've analyzed uh, 3,500 to 4,000. 4,000 and 40 million. There's a huge potential there. Researchers have just identified a new ingredient in cobra venom, a neurotoxin they've called haditoxin. This substance with a unique structure could enable the development of new drugs. In particular, the scientists hope it will help to limit the effects of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, schizophrenia, anxiety, depression, and even nicotine addiction. What would happen if a spider met a scorpion? It would try to eat it, but who would win? Uh, the one that managed to impale or sting the other first. The scorpion has a very powerful neurotoxic venom too, so there'd be a fight, and it's never certain who'd win. These spiders actually manage to eat snakes and lizards. 
so they're capable of attacking very big prey, much heavier than them. To overcome the specific difficulties of their environment, the animals have hugely developed the senses that help them to survive. The scorpion is a particularly interesting example. Despite its deficient vision and poor sense of smell, it can leap on its prey with remarkable precision. Its eight legs are equipped with sense organs able to detect the vibrations produced by any moving animal. The scorpion turns in the direction of the legs that received the signal first and so are nearest to the target. It can also gauge the distance separating it from its prey. Scorpions prefer the cool of the night to the heat of the day. Most of them show a peak in their activity at the end of the day when they leave their shelters. At that point, they spend many minutes exploring the territory around their hiding place and attack any intruders, especially fellow scorpions. These three scorpions can sense each other's vibrations. The smallest plays dead, remaining frozen. The larger ones go into battle. The scorpion on the left sinks a lethal sting into the one on the right. The fight is over. The poison takes effect quickly steadily paralyzing the victim. The struggle was brief. The winner will eat the dead scorpion. Contrary to what we might imagine, scorpions aren't at their most active when they hunt. A scorpion in search of prey alternates between quick bursts of movement and long halts. As soon as its prey comes close enough, the scorpion grabs it in its claws. When it can, the scorpion saves its venom and uses those claws to kill its victim. Not today, though. A tarantula, one of the scorpion's main predators, is hunting on its territory. Tarantulas are formidable hunters and can detect the approach of prey with their many long, mobile hairs. These grow on the palps of their jaws and their legs and cover most of their body. The warning sensors pick up movements of air and vibrations and provide the spider with information about its surroundings.
Even though the two animals' sensory systems are highly developed, their behavior is governed by instinct alone. Their actions are pre-programmed. In other words, even if a scorpion is caught and raised in a terrarium, it will remain a wild animal incapable of recognizing the hand that feeds it. It will never be a pet. Bangkok is built on either side of the Chao Phraya River, the River of Kings. More than 2,000 canals irrigate the city. Vessels of all kinds move in every direction on this lacework of water. Express taxi boats, outboards, little rowboats, and junk barges. Following the river, they can quickly travel from the heart of the city to the harbor, where the warm sea teems with dense, rich, underwater life. While the city dwellers risk snake bites and scorpion stings, the Thais who live by the sea, about 30 kilometers from the city, face other threats. Each year, fishermen and seafood eaters also end up in hospital. There are two ways of producing venom. There's venom that's triggered when you touch a fish, a stonefish, scorpionfish, or lionfish. These sea creatures have spines carrying a venom gland on their fins or heads. Predators are injured when they touch the spines. The venom is very painful and paralyzes our system. It weakens muscles and hinders breathing. Sometimes people faint just after they're stung. Another type of venom is found in the bodies of fish and can be dangerous when eaten. This venom builds up in the flesh of the fish and internal organs such as the liver and ovaries. The blowfish, for instance, produces tetrodotoxin in these organs. We can accidentally poison ourselves by eating these fish. What's more, the venom doesn't break down when heated. It's still there, even when the fish is cooked. Every year, many Thais are poisoned by these fish. The king snake eel produces a very deadly venom, listed as one of the most toxic in the world. Fortunately, the animal isn't too aggressive and flees from humans. Also, its fangs are quite short and would be unlikely to pierce a diver's suit. This isn't at all the case with its cousins, the land snakes, who live not far away in a much quieter setting. Many volunteers give up some of their time to work with the first aid units that travel around the city, providing assistance to people who've been bitten by snakes and other venomous animals. These volunteers are often to be found parked at the side of the road at a strategic junction, waiting to be called on the radio. The incidents they attend are mainly snake-related. They have to act quickly. A friend of the victim who witnessed the accident describes a snake that sounds like a cobra.
The reptile's venom contains a neurotoxin that attacks the victim's nervous system. The main effect is pain comparable to that of a sting, which moves outwards from the bite. If the toxin spreads, edemas would soon appear on the victim's feet, accompanied by oozing serum and blood. Tissue around the bite would die. The young man would feel his legs, neck, muscles, tongue, lips, and finally throat stiffen and become paralyzed. He would struggle to speak. He would begin to dribble a little and be unable to swallow. His breathing would grow labored and he'd vomit blood. He could fall into a coma and die of asphyxiation. Fortunately, he won't have to go through all that. He's been treated in time. He was brought in with his eyelids drooping and respiratory distress. The first thing we have to do is intubate him to help him breathe. Next, we have to look at the type of snake. I think it was one with neurotoxic venom. That's why the patient has trouble breathing. This young man was lucky. He's reached the emergency room less than two hours after being bitten. Even so, he'll need a skin graft on his calf and will be in hospital for a month. On the outskirts of Bangkok, some young people who cannot find work risk the cobra's bite to earn a living. The cobra is prized for its meat and skin, and a snake is worth 20 US dollars on average. To put that into perspective, a Thai manual worker earns 200 US dollars a month. Unfortunately, it's a risky business and many snake hunters end up in the emergency room of Bangkok Hospital. In this suburb, reptiles are common and quite easy to catch. First, the hunters must find a hole and dig, hoping the snake is there. เพิ่มขนาดนี้เตรียมทีนี้ก็ผมเอาเอาเพิ่มขนาดนี้เตรียมทีนี้ก็ผมเอาเอาเพิ่มขนาดนี้เตรียมทีนี้ก็ผมเ
I learned how to do it, uh, how to catch them by watching the others. I learned what you have to do after you catch them too. Now I do okay. I've even gone out to catch snakes on my own a few times, but mostly my friends go with me. <laughs> Mrs. Chuang is well known in the catering world, but more for her cobras than her cooking skills. The former snake hunter began to trade in the reptiles when her husband was bitten while out hunting one day and almost died. <laughs> Every day, many young people come here to sell cobras. Yesterday, I sold 60 kilograms of cobras. But it changes from day to day. It can be up to 100 kilograms a day. We use their skins to make purses and their meat for cooking. You have to make sure the skin isn't damaged. If there are injuries, customers won't buy it. People around here eat snake meat, but they mainly love the liver. You soak the liver in rice spirit, it's a good treatment for nearsightedness. I know snakes don't have good eyesight, but that's the way it is. If you eat it, it improves nearsightedness. That's why it sells well. Those are livers we've mixed with rice spirit. I remove the livers myself. Personally, I don't like eating snake. I don't eat any at all these days. I used to eat it when I hunted, but not anymore. According to the World Health Organization, snakes bite around 5 million people each year worldwide. Their bites cause serious injury or disablements to 3 million of those people and claim about 125,000 lives each year. Again, according to the WHO, snake bites cause more deaths and disability than some much more publicized tropical diseases such as dengue fever, cholera, Japanese encephalitis and Chagas disease. About half of all snake bites occur in Asia, mainly in India, which records up to 50,000 cases each year, making it the worst hit country in the world. Many bites are never reported. Those most exposed to snake bites are poor farmers in rural areas. Many don't have access to national health services or the means to travel to them, so they turn to unofficial local healers. In Thailand, where the authorities have been making serious efforts to deal with this scourge for years, only 10 of the 10,000 snake bites recorded annually are fatal. <laughs> 